Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number 11. Day number 11. Let's see, what do we have for today? Well, there's a question. Draw a graph of draw a graph of this inequality this is an inequality and our job is to draw a graph now what's going to happen in a real exam is that they're going to give you a question very similar to this one it does not matter whether you're taking the SAT, GRE or GMAT as I've said many times before these are basic math skills, these are basic math uh, concepts that you must have, that anybody should have at uh, his or her fingertips if you have any hope at all of doing well in any of these tests, whether you're sitting for SAT, GRE, or GMAT, it does not matter. This is very basic mathematics that they expect you to know, regardless of which exam that you're preparing for. Do you understand? So what I was saying is that it doesn't matter. Uh, what I was saying is that in the real exam, whether you're taking the SAT or GRE or GMAT, it doesn't matter. In the real exam, what's going to happen is that they're going to give you five graphs, obviously five answer choices, A, B, C, D, E. They're going to give you five graphs, and instead of saying draw a graph of, obviously you cannot draw the graph on the exam, the question will read, which of the following represents the correct depiction of this inequality? Or which of the following is the proper graph for this inequality? In order, in, and in order for you to be able to, in order for you to be able to recognize which of the following five graphs is actually the proper depiction of this inequality, you have to first be, you have to first you first have to be able to draw it yourself. You first have to be able to draw it yourself before you can tell which of the following five depictions is the proper depiction of this inequality. So let's draw it, okay, shall we? Enough of the talk. The very first thing that we should notice is that we have a negative four here in the bottom. We need to get rid of it somehow. How do I get our negative four from the bottom? Multiply both sides by negative four. And if you stop at that, and if you get going at that point on, so let's, let's, so negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28, x, and then this negative 4 cancels out with this negative 4, that was the whole point, 4x minus 6. And if you start from here, if this is your next step, then you're doomed. That's it, you're done. You're going to get the wrong answer. Something has gone, something has gone wrong drastically. Something grave. Oh, that's a good word, grave. I'm gonna make a list. I'm gonna put that uh, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna put that on my list here so that we can cover the word in the future. Grave, what does it mean? Obviously, the word grave has two meanings. And why do I say obviously? Because if it only had one meaning, the meaning that everybody knows, the grave, as in the resting place of the deceased, everybody knows that meaning. I would hardly be making a fuss about it then. It's a simple word. What, what is the second meaning of the word grave? Grave means serious. Something of serious nature is said to be grave. And what's the noun of it? Oh, there's another good word. Boy, guys, this thing never ends. So now, so not only do we have to learn the word grave in its second meaning, which means serious, but we also have to learn the noun of it. If something is grave, that thing is said to have gravity. If this means serious, 
then this must mean seriousness. You must have heard of you must have heard of somebody uh, describing something of utmost gravity. If someone says to you, "Pay close attention. This is a matter of utmost gravity." What they're trying to tell you is that this is a matter of utmost seriousness. This is a very serious matter. Young man, pay attention. It is a matter of utmost gravity. That's where the word gravity comes from. Where the hell did it come from? Grave. Oh, if this is your second step, if this is your second step, then stop. Something grave has gone wrong. Something serious has gone wrong. It is a matter of utmost gravity as to what I'm about to explain to you. So pay attention, please. What happens is that when you're dealing with this is a very common mistake people make when they're dealing with inequality. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a simple example. Would you agree to, to this inequality? Would you agree to it? Of course you would. 3 is less than 4. Of obviously. Let's multiply both sides by 2. Would you agree now? Would you agree now that 2 times 3? Would you agree now that 2 times 3 is less than 4 times? Would you agree that 3 times 2 is less than 4 times 2? Of obviously because I multiplied both sides of the inequality by the same number. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't it make sense? Or it will make sense. If 3 is less than 4, then twice that amount is going to be less than twice the other amount. If 3 is less than 4, then twice of 3, it should be less than twice of 4. Makes perfect sense. Because we multiplied both sides of the inequality by the same number, just like you would do in inequality. But what, what would have happened if instead of multiplying it by 2, if we had multiplied both sides by negative 2? Would you agree still? Do you still agree? The answer is no. We cannot agree anymore because a negative 2 times 6 is neg negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, which is no longer smaller than negative 8. Negative 6 in is in fact greater than negative 8. Negative 6 is greater than negative 8. So you can see. So what do we learn? What we learn is that when we multiply both sides of inequality, not equality, this is an inequality. When we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality switches. Let me write that down before I forget it, how I said it. When we multiply both sides of an inequality, obviously, because this is an inequality. When we multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, by a negative number, the direction of inequality switches. The direction of the inequality switches. As you can see here, 3 is less than 4, but negative 2 times 3 is more than 4. We just multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2, so the direction switches. It is no longer smaller, it is now more. Negative 6 is more than negative 8, which is exactly what happened here. This is no longer true, because we multiplied both sides of the inequality by negative 4. You see, this side of the inequality we multiply by negative 4, and that side of the inequality we multiply by negative 4. And the reason we multiplied both sides of the inequality by a negative number, a negative 4 to be precise, is because we wanted to get rid of because we wanted to get rid of this negative 4 from the bottom. In order, to, in order for us to be able to get rid of this negative 4, we have to multiply this side by negative 4. And if we multiply this side by negative 4, we, mu we must multiply this side by negative 4. But since we're multiplying two sides of inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality has to switch. This thing has to switch. This cannot stay like that. It has to switch. It is now this. So this side is greater than that side. Before, this side was smaller than that side. Now this side is greater than this side. 
and now we carry on. The rest is downhill. The rest is simple. This was this was the this was the grave mistake. This is the the most important uh, pitfall, if you like, uh, that uh, people will have. I'm not sure if that's the right word. I don't know. I'm not sure. If. But this is the, this is the problem. So let's carry on then. As I said, the rest is simple. Let's bring this 12 on this side, so add 12 to both sides. And we get, this 12 cancels out and we get 28x is greater than 4x plus 6. Because negative 6 and a positive 12 gives us positive 6. Let's subtract 4x from both sides. The rest is simple, the rest is downhill, there is no difference between handling an inequality versus handling equality. Everything is the same, nothing changes, all the rules are the same, except one rule, which is this rule right here. Well, I, I take it back actually, except two rules. When you're multiplying or dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number, aha, when we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality switches. Let me give you a quick example of, of uh, uh, dividing by a negative number. 2 is more than 1. 2 divided by 2 is still more than 1 divided by 2. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 is more than half. But what happens instead of, what happens if instead of dividing by a negative 2, if we had divided by Instead of dividing by positive 2, if we had divided by negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1, which is no longer more than negative half, it is less than negative half. Negative 1 is less than negative half. You see, it switched. Because we divided both sides of the inequality by a negative number, negative 2 here. So that should have read, when we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality switches. Other than, other than that one rule, everything else stays the same as to how to handle inequality as opposed to inequality. If you know how to manipulate equality, then you know how to manipulate inequality. There is no difference except this one rule. Okay? So let's carry on then. I need, I need the rule. So 28x minus 4x gives us 24x is greater than or equal to, this 4x drops out, 6, let's divide both sides by 6, so this is, so 4x is greater than or equal to 1, and therefore x is greater than or equal to 1 quarter, if you divide both sides by 4. I don't know if I should, I don't know if I need to show you every single step, divide both sides by 4, so get rid of this 4 and x is greater than or equal to 1. That's your final answer. x is greater than or equal to 1 quarter. And now we need to show it on the graph. And for that I need room. So I'm going to erase this part. Should I erase this part or should I erase the top? They're equally important. Which one should I erase? Let's erase the top. Because you already have the problem. And you can always, of course, rewind it. Same thing would apply there too, but I don't know why I'm making a fuss. Let's erase the top. And finally, now that you know something about the x, we can we can draw it on the we can draw a graph of it because that was the question: How do you draw the graph of the inequality that was given to us? So here is our number line. Here is my zero. Here is my one, and it will go on. Or if you like, put a one here so that you can see it. So there is a two, and it goes on forever. How do I know it goes on forever? Because of this arrow. On this side also, it goes on forever. There is our one. This must be our half, and this must be our quarter. And we know that x is greater than or equal to equal to. It's important. Greater than or equal to one quarter. So here's our one quarter. And all of this thing, we do it in a different color. There we go. 
and the closed circle oh that was great wasn't it the closed circle the circle is closed you see had it been an open circle open circle would have been like this x is greater than one quarter but here it says x is greater than or equal to one quarter which means we have to close the circle which means circle one quarter is also also included and there is your graph starting from here all the way from one quarter to infinity and that's the graph of the inequality that was given to us all right well i hope you found it helpful if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring for sat gre gmat or toefl uh, go to any of these website addresses, prep for gre.com, prep for gmat.com, prep for sd.com, or prep for toefl.com, and send me an email and you will get hold of me. For personal private tutoring over the internet via Skype or in person. Or you can simply go to keshwaniprep.com and you can send me an email from there as well. Alright? Thank you.